This Bronzino is one of the most fascinating painters of the Italian Renaissance, a follower of Michelangelo, but rather less pious and considerably sexier. There's never been a major exhibition of Bronzino's work, partly because it's extremely fragile, but now at the Palazzo Strozzi in Florence, they finally put that right. And with over 70 stunning pictures on display, well, somebody had to go to Italy to take a look. Florence, the cradle of the Renaissance. In the mid 1500s, this city was a creative furnace, a crucible of the arts that transformed European culture. And for 500 years, it's been literally cashing in on its Renaissance legacy. Every year, millions of people come here in buses and set out to do the Renaissance in a day. They come in order to see the Palazzo Vecchio, Michelangelo's David, the Galleria degli Uffizi. And once they've ticked those things off their list, they often leave again. Now, there are many in Florence who benefit from this, but there are also many here who are unhappy with it. One leading figure in the city's administration said to me, I wish people would stop skim-reading our city. I want them to drill deeper into the Renaissance, to engage more deeply with the art and the culture of this city, to realise that we're not just a museum embalmed in the past, that what once happened here has had a crucial effect in shaping the present. We're relevant. A series of exhibitions at the Palazzo Strozzi is encouraging us to look again at the Italian Renaissance, beginning with the first ever major exhibition of the artist known as Bronzino. If you're looking for an artist to exemplify the idea that the Renaissance was actually more dynamic and forward-looking than its reputation, Bronzino would seem like rather an odd choice. When I studied art history at university, my tutor said to me that Bronzino is a gigolo. He's a man who sold his soul to the Medici, and this exhibition opens with imagery that seems to play exactly to that stereotype. Here, we've got Bronzino painting Mr. Florence, Cosimo the First de Medici, the Grand Duke, invulnerable in this spiked, cold, glittering suit of armor. And over on the other wall, we've got um, an image of Cosimo's consort, Eleonora de Toledo, a wonderfully virtuoso demonstration of Medici power and wealth. And yet, there's just something about this picture. It's monumental, yet it's also brittle. There's a certain uneasiness, almost a kind of haunted look in the eyes of that little boy. I think that if you look beneath the surface of Bronzino, you'll find an artist who has got a certain richness and complexity to him. He's an artist full of surprises. I'm just checking that we've got the place to ourselves, which we do. Uh, now, before we go any further, I wanted to pay a trip to the men's toilets, because they're nothing if not enterprising here at the Palazzo Strozzi, and they've chosen this as the place to reveal one of Bronzino's many hidden gifts, namely his talents as a bawdy poet. They've got one of his poems printed on the wall. It's called The Artist's Tool, and it's supposedly, anyway, about his paintbrush. He writes, this is something always to remember. For noble and important jobs, you need an implement that's on the robust side. What you need is a good brush. A good brush grows, and were it not that daylight's fading fast, I'd show it to you now, except that I can't. Bronzino's baldiness permeates his astonishing erotic mythologies, full of a vivid carnality. A great painter of the flesh, he also appealed to the intellect. Now, this extremely rare and unusual picture shows an actual person at the court of Cosimo de' Medici, the dwarf Morgante. Now, one of the most uh, striking details of the picture and another note of comedy is the way in which Bronzino has arranged matters so that a lunar moth should have flown directly in front of the figure's genitalia just at this particular moment. I think the artist is actually telling us something about the nature of painting. He's saying that painting can master time, but to get the full message, you need to come round to the other side of the painting. 
Now the picture's actually got two sides. The other side's the before, this side is the after. The picture was painted in response to a challenge from one of the intellectuals at the court who said, which is the superior art form, sculpture or painting? And this was Bronzino's attempt to prove that painting was superior to sculpture because you can walk around this picture just like you can walk around a sculpture, but here the figure's face turns to look at you. He's depicted the actual passing of time. The actual passing of time. The actual passing of time. And Bronzino won the argument. He was judged to have proved that painting was superior to sculpture. But behind the bawdiness, behind the slightly louche air of decadence, behind the intellectual game playing, there was also a deep and abiding anxiety at the core of Bronzino's art. Italy during his lifetime had been deeply traumatized by a succession of bloody wars. Catholics had massacred Protestants and Protestants had massacred Catholics. It was a time when religious allegiance could cost you your life. This compelling, radiant, strange, perfectly symmetrical image of Christ crucified on the cross stands as in many ways, the central image of Bronzino's career as a religious painter. It's a compellingly ambiguous painting. There's no sense here of Christ's weight dragging on the terrible nailed hands or of suffering. Indeed, there's almost no blood. It's a strangely hygienic image. And at the time, the Protestants and Luther had argued very much against the bloody image of Christ on the cross. They had argued, if you were going to have an image of Christ at all, that it should be like this, idealized, raised above the troubles of this world, as if floating up towards heaven. So this was a picture that actually got Bronzino and his patrons into quite a bit of trouble. But for me, Bronzino's very greatest works have to be his portraits. Their combination of nervy naturalism and ice-cold formal rigor establish that Bronzino isn't just locked away in the Renaissance past. He was a real player in the development of a modern language of painting. Look at these pictures, these images where you've got this juxtaposition between a vivid sense of human presence and yet an almost abstract sense of colour and composition. That would fascinate artists from the 19th century painter Ang all the way through to great masters of the modern period such as Picasso and Matisse. What I love about this exhibition is the way in which it raises Bronzino up, it establishes him as one of the great painters but without dispelling any of his mystery. Can the art of the Florentine Renaissance still speak to us in the modern world? You bet it can.